everybody. I would like to welcome you to the first show of uh, the Full Spectrum Project. Um, I'm your host, Brian Clune. Um, I have uh, my co-host here, um, Pete. Uh, have have handout. No, Pete, have a hand. You know what, Pete? Introduce yourself. Uh, here we go. Already first show. My name well, is Pete Haviland. I am the co. I am the co-host of the Full Spectrum Project as well. And uh, our news person, uh, Angie Mole, is with us this evening as well. Actually, this afternoon. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. since, this, since this is our first show, you'll have to bear with us. Uh, we'll we'll catch our bearings at some point. But today, I am absolutely thrilled that uh, our guest Alexandra Holzer agreed to uh, come on and be our first uh, first guest. I, it, th- this is absolutely fantastic for me. Um, I grew up reading her father's books and uh, been been following her career for a while. And I am I am literally just thrilled to have Alexandra here. Um, Alexandra, say hi to everybody. And again, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I can't see any of you all. Can you see me? Um, I can see you. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh. I, I have four blue boxes, but it's all good. Story of my life. Just a <laughs> box, another colored box. There it is. In life. Good Lord. Yeah. Actually, we don't. Actually, we don't cast any uh, any reflections. I'll see you all, vampires. Ha ha. Try another one. You gotta be more uh, creative. <laughs> well, I I, I, I look thought at I tried. I look at Pete more like he's Frankenstein's monster. I mean, have you seen him recently? I know you and he, he are friends, but uh, yeah, I I, I don't can't know about the way he looks nowadays. What? <laughs> No, I can't see anything right now, so I can't even I can't even speak to that. I'll have to just take your word. Well, I, you know what? Feel you, you should feel lucky that you can't see him right now. So, um, <laughs> anyway, um, Alexander. Well, that's what my wife says. Yeah, you ought, you'd be surprised at what your wife says, actually. But uh, oh, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I, I I knew that she was cheating on me. Here, here's here's the scary thing. If our wives ever get to know each other, you and I are in trouble. Just plain and simple. So great. We'll uh, w- let's just try and keep them apart as much as we can. Okay. Uh, so, Alexandra, um, we have some questions we wanted to ask you. We kind of wanted to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, uh, basically, who you are, and you know what what you know brought you to to be doing your TV show and. Uh, all the different things that it, it, it must have been like growing up with a, a relatively famous father. Uh, so if you don't mind, we'll, we'll just get right to it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, one, of the, one of the questions we had, um, I had read in an article that you were 32 years old before you, I guess, heard your aunt's voice, which sort of brought your uh, gifts to um, make themselves known to you. Mm-hmm. Um what what was it like to 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 all of a sudden realize that you sort of had that that gift? Um, and do you happen to remember any kind of telltale signs leading up to that? That um, after you realized it, you looked back and went, "Oh, okay, that's what that was." Yeah, I mean, I and I wrote about that in my book, Growing Up Haunted. You know, I I knew that um, things were a little bit different at the age of five. You know just because of the environment that I grew up in with my father out and about doing what he was doing. Um, and it was just with him. My entire family was involved to some degree. My mother, my mother's mother, who was a Parisian, very, very psychic. Um, it just was the environment. And, you know, we have those, you know, next generation connections. And some people uh, have the ability and others have to make it to it. And sometimes they just don't. And they come and go, and that, that life is thing. And if they come back again, maybe they'll be taken at that point, you know. So it was it was a constant in my life growing up. But it wasn't until my had passed away, you know, before she died, we went to go see her, and hospice had shown up, and I felt so guilty because I was busy at the time having babies. I just had my third daughter six weeks when she was dying. 
And so I was very preoccupied. I kind of got away from everything. I went to art school in Manhattan. I went to FIT. Um, I was always a writer and an artist. I did acting, you know, but I never wanted to go into paranormal research because it just wasn't for me at that moment. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I doesn't mean I can't do it and I wouldn't be good at it or, you know, continue on the work. It just for me, my twenties wasn't where I was at. And so her an experience for me because out of it, she's kind of almost like in a, in a coma-like state in and out of it. She said a few words to me and she hadn't spoken. And when we had gotten there and we tried to let her hold the six week baby, you know, and, and kind of say goodbye. She loved having the children. She didn't have her and she said to me with her eyes closed, I'm changing. Now that, that haunted me on the car ride home back upstate family because I didn't understand and as as my true nature is an Aries we believe in astrology and we're true to our signs depending on what when we're born in that sign because then we cusp on the next sign and so on and so forth I really am that that true Aryan nature of of you know the leadership and wanting to know what everything is regardless it haunted me for years like what what was that you know right. and then one day I'm doing the mom thing, you know, folding laundry. And that's when I spoke about that in the article was that I heard her come back to me and say, I love you. So then all of a sudden here comes the clear audience. And I'm like, oh, what wow, the wow. just, be I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't asking. I was, you know, just doing what I do, trying to move on in life to understand uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Opened right. Up a portal for me that I walked through that open door and I consulted with my father, my mother, and we started having conversations throughout the coming months about what was going on. And then my father had an experience with my, my late aunt. Um, and he, up until then, didn't really go on the side of, you know, being psychic and always that was, you know. And he softened over the years and became so intuitive himself that he had an experience with my late aunt. And we all shared that privately when we all got together after she had died. And so it changed me yet again. So here, then I approached my, my beginning of my 30s, and then I started to kind of, you know, I started writing again, publishing, trying to be kind of like a quasi-journalist, like my father before me, interviewing people, being interviewed, doing radio shows, you know, almost 20 years at this now, believe it or not, I'm 49, I'm 50. So, you know, this is old hat for me now. And it's just, now we are where we are today. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of seems like you're um, you're you're enjoying it a little bit more now as well than uh, like in in a couple of the articles I've read that uh, you were interviewed in you it it almost seemed like you were not quite sure whether you wanted to um, approach it that way and now it just seems like you, you you've fallen into it to where you actually have started to enjoy it. Um, yeah, more embraced it. Yeah, you know yeah. what. Because I think in life, and, and part of the paranormal, which mm -hmm. is always, you're never going to find it in a show, maybe in a documentary when you allow people to explore more in conversations, developing that story of, of the reality behind the people, um, is, is in this field, we have to learn as we grow, which means as we mature and we age and we come across mm -hmm. other colleagues, we have intelligent conversations, we go out and we do an investigation, each mm -hmm. and every Time, you're learning something new there isn't anybody right. and my own father never said he was an expert anything you know what people mm -hmm. fail to understand is including myself somebody had um published an article on me as you know the the leading female and also a parapsychologist i said i never said i was a paris but you know people take something they want to put it out there and then it's out there it doesn't mean that you know like with us with users you know people take from it what they want People write up things. It doesn't mean that we tell them these things. The life of the paranormal, like my father always said, is one of the things you're on a journey for X amount of time right. in this body at some point. That's going to die, whichever way. And then we go on to the next plane of existence. And sometimes we come back and sometimes we don't. But even on the other side, we're still learning. You see, it's it's right. never constant. We're up. This is it. I'm telling you what this is. Now, there are moments in the field where we get it. We have the information and we can definitely spot on. We know the answers. But right. it's a really about thing. It, it comes full circle. It's a little bit of everything. 
Um, I read that I read when you were nine or ten years old, your mother brought some Christmas gifts for you, for, uh, for the teachers in your Manhattan prep school. Do you remember this? Unfortunately, uh, I guess at the time. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I go said, ahead. unfortunately, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I guess at the time you weren't aware of your uh, father's profession, and uh, when your uh, when your teacher opened the gifts, uh, your teacher pulled out a few of your dad's books, um, and then you were kind of wondering. And I guess you not only wondered about what your dad did for a living, uh, and it caused uh, uh, you fell out of your seat, I guess, because you weren't really aware of what, what he did. Is it, that sound sound about right? Uh, how did the kid, how did the kid, kids teach you afterwards? Yeah, so what happened was, um, you know, I grew up in Manhattan. My okay. parents sent my sister and me to um, private schools because okay. during, during the uh, early 80s, uh, public schools in Manhattan weren't that good. And depending okay. on where you live, you either can attend to one if it's close enough or not. And we didn't live that close to a lot of them that they would want to send us to. So they tried to put us in the private school system. And okay. as a result, you know, the classrooms were very small. Everything was a lot mm -hmm. more intimate. And I went to school with a lot of kids that had money. And believe it or not, mm -hmm. we were we were slowly not, we weren't in that position. We, we survived mm -hmm. and we did what we had to do, but I was in the mix of what wasn't really comfortable for me. And so when kids would buy ties for the social studies teacher, you know, oh, nice. um, great for him or cologne my parents my mother said okay darling we're going to gift wrap some books for your teacher that you love you know your social studies is my favorite and we're going to wrap it up so not only did she wrap up books that had ufos in the title and ghosts and witches mind you mm -hmm. but she put right. it in this metallic gold wrapping paper that i didn't realize but when my teacher started opening it the gold ended up on his fingers uh -huh. and so he started turning gold and then he opens up the paper and then out comes these books. And okay. I was more mm. because the, we gave books away. That was what we did. But when you're in a private school, I mean, back then you have to understand it was, it wasn't the culture. It was you buy nice lavish gifts and blah, blah, blah. And here's little Alex Holzer giving away her father's creepy books. And like, he's a real guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wow. bet you don't think of them as creepy books now, though, do you? Well, obviously no, because I've aged and 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 you know raising a small tribe over here, you know. Um, and then I've become more intuitive as the years have gone by, and I've also have let go of a lot of what my father didn't like, which was that terrible word, fear. Um, mm -hmm. I think fear is so crippling in so many ways, and if you're going to be a really good medium or a psychic or intuitive. You have right. to be honest and you have to be truthful about what it is that you can and can't do or how, if you can right. help it be. And mm -hmm. so I started to kind of be going through that direction of, of embracing my intuitive abilities. And I would start by doing meetings for my family and then right. they would get the word because I would, ju I just, you know, can I, can I curse? Am I allowed to say a curse word? Mm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. I, I ask because some I can't, sometimes I can't, but I'm from New York, so I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, this is internet. Fly. Go ahead. Yeah, this is internet. Let it fly. Yeah, let it fly. So I was um, at a point where, you know, I said, you know, fuck this shit. I'm going to just run with this. And then when I started to do what I did, other people from the family, colleagues, friends started to, you know, do readings with me. And then I start to hone in my abilities and really start focusing on using ESP, you know, and it would waver. So over the years, I'd kind of get into it and then I'd slow down. Now I'm at a point today with my husband, um, who's an empath as well, and a very good writer that we've just decided, and, and through my father he keeps telling us, because we do communicate with him, um, okay. you know, is that he, the, the, the main things that he tells me from, from where he is out there, He's in a different plane of existence um, to practice ESP and focus and pay attention. All right. Everything else will sort out, you know? So, so it, right. what he's saying is to, to kind of go with what you feel is, is the truth and stick mm -hmm. regardless of the interference 
of what could come at you in life to pull you in the other direction, which would be negative. And that parlays into the field of physical research or cyclical research, actually, is the first, um, of doing the work, you know, and so that's where we are today. It's, it's really gotten to a point of academia, obviously always with the sense of humor, unlike my father, he was very dry, but that made him even funnier, in my opinion. Mm. Um, you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, Pete, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to jump ahead here because uh, no, go of, ahead. Kind no, of go ties ahead. into something that uh, Alexander was saying. Um, no, go ahead. I, I had read that when your when your dad first came home to let you know that he was going to be on his first television uh, show that you just weren't all that thrilled about it. Um, that he kind of made you come down and watch it. And I guess the whole time you're kind of like, okay, yeah, fine. Dad's on TV. Right. Um, now I'm an author myself. Um, and I cannot get my kids to even think about sitting down and reading one of my books. Uh, they're basically ghost books, um, you know, historical, uh, paranormal. And I literally cannot get them to sit down and read them. Uh, my daughter won't even admit to her friends that um, I write or that I'm a paranormal investigator. I was wondering, how do your kids, are, are they kind of the same way with, with your books and, and your, your television appearances and things like that, where they're just kind of like, oh, mom, come on. We, we know, but we don't want to tell our friends. No, because unfortunately in my situation, it's very different than a lot of people that have Put out books. Been you see. See the problem is nowadays, and and it's and I and it's great that what you're doing, and a lot of people are, but anybody puts out a book, anybody gets on a TV show, anybody can get uh and be an, a guest expert on this, this, and that. And if you've noticed, I haven't been on much of anything. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. um, it's just a very unique situation where he was who he was and still is combined with my mother and her side of the family with the Bucks Hovind and lineage that had their own haunted stories from 20 years apart in age to having us children, us growing up and having our own. So it's always, it's been ingrained in our kids here. It's very natural and normal. If anything, they want to see more of mommy out there. They want to see more of my voice being heard as a role model. And as, as a, like a strong, you know, kind of like a female protagonist defending the throne, so to speak. I, you know, my father didn't have sons. He had daughters. It is what it is. And so, you know, where do you put that? And they, they're they more about, yeah, come on, mom. Let's, you know, they're, it's like a cheerleading team over here. But that's not the way the world works, is it? So, you know, you have, no, you, you have to fight for, for your your. Uh, opinions to be heard you have to be respectful when you when you do these conversations but you know certain things are unique in itself and they really can't be compared to anything else and that's what makes them so unique you know and that's why you don't see me going to every conference you know pre-covid whatever but the point is I, I think if I were to be out there all the time doing that then it loses the nostalgic unique of it because then oh yeah we've seen her we've seen her isn't it more appreciated to have a moment that would be hard to do for on my end or that I choose not to do it so if I go and I do something you know that when I'm appearing it's not about money or it's not about attention it's about I'm gonna choose to do it because it's important and special yeah that does that make sense without coming you know what I'm saying Oh no no, no. I, yeah yeah it, no that no that, that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I it, 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 do it and it's great, but for me, it's got to be worth it. At, and this is what we talked about going older. Mm -hmm. I'm 49. I'm at a point now where I'm just enough. You know, I, I like let's get to it. Let's get this done. Let's do this. Let's create that. You know, and and not just sit here and exist and say things. Let's actually make them happen. But but it has to make sense. And everybody has their own life path in this field that that's a part of it and and writing books or articles or appearing in things it, it's got to be that it has to be respectful and for me i feel like the field has changed so much over the years that i'm still trying to figure out where i'm going to fit in you know what i mean like i'm it's a little frustrating at times but 
she's appreciative and like with you guys wanting to talk to me i if you you know look back at 15 years i've been doing this publicly i've always done the shows whether there's five people listening or 500 i'm not there's no pretentiousness there and i and i you know i'd like to see more of that out there in the field of people that have been more noted or have had the spotlight on them where are they there's you know like to me the integrity is to do something because you you want to do it to to get it out there and be humble and appreciative of that platform, not because it's a photo op, not because it's going to advance your career. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Parasol. Uh, Will um, make is if you it 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 pay um, it's a refreshing point of view and, and, and as I take it I really like it well um, I just there's this there's an ex, there's an assumption because my father is who he is and I'm just kind of there do you know what I'm saying you know and it's not I've always done the work I have been out there while he was still with us in the physical sense working with him and because it's not put out there for public consumption of what I've I've put on film or what I've written you know that it's not all put out there on the internet to prove it or to say here 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 there's enough out there to show a timeline and there's enough out there to go back and see you know some things are better kept in private especially when when you're doing it for the right reasons and you're not doing it for everything else and this has been an ongoing well, thing i just don't want a huge part i think you can be very well known in this life and still be a good person with integrity humility appreciativeness and loyalty and honesty and still get it out there without having to be a clown you know what i mean you can you know it's yeah. like well, well yeah, given, no. given what you given what you've said here, um, is this what made you uh, look through your dad's case files and uh, and and do the and bring and develop uh, the Holzer files? Uh, that was something that I was already doing on my own for years. Pitching, I've already created that off of my father's work to reopen up his work. Right. This was an opportunity through a company that uh, had a okay. relationship with a network. I was never considered to even be in that middle role. And to be honest with you, I'm very grateful that they have an interest in my father's work. And I hope to have a continuing relationship with the network because I've already written up other projects and I have a new partner, a business partner. And so hopefully this year we'll have some to announce, but that particular show I have really no involvement with, and it's not really by choice. It's it's kind of like, you know, well, this is for dad, but it really should be more about dad. And it's kind of hard to do that in vain of a reality show, especially when I'm not out there doing it. Does that make sense? Like, wh why wouldn't I be doing the investigation, reopening up his work? Because it's kind of was the whole point. So it's a great opportunity, and I appreciate it to the network to have taken that interest, but everything else to it, you know, um, it's a great uh, reminder who my father was and, you know, mm -hmm. as far as his work and still is, but that's as far as it goes, as far as I'm, my opinion. And I think people like things for different reasons and you'll have people that won't like things and you'll have people that are on the fence. Do you know what I mean? And there's, there's something for right. everybody, but as a holzer who's actually still of the living, that's, that's right. not... I think is an ode to him. I don't think that's the best that we can do. And I know it's not because we're working on other things and it takes time. And now we're, we're at a place right now where we have a lot of great stuff and a lot of big interest. And I'm mm -hmm. very appreciative of that. And, and that's kind of where I'm at. So wh where do you want to see the show go from here? Um, no comment. Okay. No. I really don't think okay. Okay. It's not, it's, it's not for me. It's, it was to apparently, you know, it's, it's, um, a re announcement, a reintroduction to Dr. Hans Holzer and who is he? And, you know, how far back does this guy go? How many books 
different. You know, I mean, that's really what I want people to take away from it. And then I would love for them to learn about him by actually buying a book, um, whether it's digital download, you know, or actually getting the physical book. We still make them, thank God, these days, not, you know, the way it should be. We, you know, we need to bring back all the bookstores, but... And there is still nothing better than uh, opening up a brand new book and That's sniffing right. the pages. I'm sorry, but there is. I, we all do. Listen, I mean, it smells great. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that to me is the greatest gift that people can do. And, and I've been um, working with um, my publisher to get out more of my father's books that are older. And we've actually mm -hmm. added some more. So they're on Amazon, you know, and you can find them. It's the Hans Holzer Digital Collection by Press, mm -hmm. and there's so many great titles that we've revamped that are no longer available unless you go to like a flea market or you're on eBay. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's that's like you gotta be kidding me. This this way people can actually just download them. Um, we did actually do one in print, which is the greatest collection of under the consoles or digital collection, and we have a couple more that we'll probably put in print. But you know, like I said today, print is different. Everything's become digital. So um, but we still have a couple of other publishers um, that are still doing some of the print, but a lot of his books um, have had the publishing companies die out or merge or just don't exist anymore. They've gone under. So Throat Press and I were able to get them back and rescan them and get them available to the public so they can go back in time and about my father's work, ESP, um, being psychic, and what does that mean? The ghost cases, investigations that break out into possessions. Um, what happens when we die? What is a stay behind? Um, what's the poltergeist? Like, you know, it's educational material that's digestible, even back then when he started this, you know. So that's my greatest takeaway from this one little project. But there's so mm -hmm. much else bigger for him on the ride. Uh, that's what we're looking at as a family, uh, you know, so. Yeah, I, I really wish more uh, paranormal investigators of today would actually go back, uh, find your father's books and learn from them. I am, I am finding so many uh, people out there really don't know exactly what they're doing when it comes to paranormal investigations because they've learned more from TV rather than Right. Pioneers like your father who actually went out and did the research and came up with the theories that are still, um, you know, acceptable today. And it would yeah. it would really be a big boon to the to the to the paranormal if people would look, actually go out and, and read your father's books and, and actually learn something from uh, a true pioneer rather than a television show. Uh, yeah, because yeah. get the perfect gifts for pets and pet lovers at Chewy. <laughs> Save on presents for your pets, like food, toys, and treats. And for friends and family, we have e gift cards to show how much you care. Shop e gift cards and more. Visit Chewy.com today. Gearheads know that some projects need so many parts, it feels like you need a whole storage unit just to store them. That's what eBay Motors' 122 million parts are for. Think of it as your virtual parts garage. They've always got the right fitment at the right prices. Use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Because if you don't, because you don't, if you don't know where you, you've been, you don't know where you're going. That's and, right. Uh, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. And listen, I get it. I get that there's a show, but that, you know, with my monarch is up there. That's my name too, you know, and it, this mm -hmm. is not just like, you know, so for me, again, it puts me back in the hot seat of a unique position. And a lot of people presume one thing, presume another thing. And, but it, it's, it's, to me, it's an int reintroduction to uh, an audience that may have not have known who he is because a lot of people still don't know who he is there, you know? And so my, my goal and my job is to change that this year, which is what we've been working on. And like I said, hopefully before the year's over, we'll have some, some announcements if it goes into the new year, so be it, but it is happening. And the, the interest is definitely there now. So that's wonderful. And I'm in the middle of all of that. And then there's my own work and, you know, I'm always going to be a part of my father's work. That was the whole deal. That was the whole point when I was growing up as a kid. And, you know, a lot of people, don't seem to understand that at times and some do, you know, and it's like, you know, you can't, it's not something that I am asking people to be relatable to, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just have the respect for it 
And if you put yourself in my shoes and flip it around, it becomes very personal. Nobody knows our family intimately better than we do. And there's somebody out there that, that can go. And if they open up a case or they do an investigation, if it's not certainly working with me directly or if I'm not there, how authentic is it really? Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Do you know, anybody can look at words, make it, make it into something. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. But I'm the holzer. I'm carrying on that lineage. I have the bloodline. It's almost like, you know, Clint Eastwood's son, the actor. He's now an actor. Stephen King's son is a good writer. Obviously, he put yes, out he something. Is. You know, so why is it not okay Ooh. for Dr. Hans Holzer to have his, lin his lineage and bloodline continue? Why? Because it's not father and son? Do you, do you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, I'm a daughter. I'm sorry. I was born with boobs, not the other thing. But it doesn't mean I'm any less... <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> well, that's just what it is. I'm sorry. That's sorry. That's just funny. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's just funny. Alexander, please don't get Pete all excited. We'll never get him to stop. So just. Oh go. God. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, listen, but I have a mouth, and I and I am oh, from. Geez. And I don't give a uh, shit anymore because why should any of us? We're gonna we're gonna go at some point, and with everything that's going right on right now in the environment all over the world. Well, well, having that and ha having that name is a heck of a, resp a, res of a responsibility. It truly is. It's not you easy. To, you have it's, to, uh, it's no. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not. With and a great name a comes great standard. responsibility. And <laughs> whether you want to deal with it or not. Well, you know what it is. Hello? It's, it's like with. Um, Star Wars, you know, what did they just, oh my God, my husband and I had just finished watching it on Disney Plus. They came out with yeah. um, The Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, um, it's The Mandalorian way. It's, it's what is, what was the, 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 the phrase that he used? It's the way, it's our, what does he, what did he say? It's uh, the way to be The Mandalorian. It's like a certain set of rules. That's the way. And that means if you're Mandalorian, how you behave and what's expected of you is like being a soldier and that's what you do. It's, it's the way, do you know what I mean? Yes. I am no. a paranormal Amanda fucking Lorian dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I well, see it. At, yeah. At least, at least you're not a baby Yoda. Oh, I can I tell you, I think our, this year's Christmas tree, I'm just going to get a bunch of baby Yodas with lights. Maybe that'll be cool. Yeah, I, I think, think there will be. I, I think the, I think the Baby Yoda is kind of cool. One one of these days, I'm going to have to watch that show just to find out what's going on with Baby Yoda. I mean, everybody oh, is baby just into Yoda's Baby cool. Yoda. <laughs> baby uh, Yoda is cool. Yeah, apparently. Well, never mind, Pete. I won't oh. go there. <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. innocent. It's in its infancy stages. Yet it's it's ancient right it's it's been around a long time and it's got its lineage and it's this high intelligence and it has the force you know and and so in a way you know maybe we are like baby yoda's over here in the holzer homestead we have the force and we have this bloodline and lineage and it's like and it also goes into my mother my mother's side is the bucks Hovidans, which is um we are blue bloods so we have royal russian ancestry where my grandfather was the count of Russia, and mm -hmm. his family married into Catherine the Great's family. So I have not just Dr. Hans Holzer, but I have Countess Catherine Buxhoveden, my mother. Wow. So I'm like a major Yoda here, dude. I'm telling you. As I say, that's that's a heck of a lineage. It's out there. So, but you know, so so there's a lot of stuff. So I use the Force. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> compass the Force. I wish I just had a little saucer to like move around in. That would make. <sighs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, let me ask, let me ask you this: when you found when you found out that you had ability and you started growing up, and uh, you started kind of accepting what was going on with you, did your dad ever ask you about anything about any of his cases, or did you offer anything any uh, uh, advice or give any or, or any anything about any of the cases at all, even when you were growing up? Oh, God, yeah. Well, you know, the, the, I started the conversations about cemeteries. I okay. really had a hard time understanding what the deal was with the cemeteries. And 
that's when he explained to me, I was several, I was probably about maybe eight years old, nine years old. And he said, Alex, this nothing going on. Sometimes they're there, they link on, but it is a vest of real estate property. I said, aha, okay, daddy. So that began that kind of movement towards putting dead bodies in the ground wasn't for the bodies of the people that no longer are in the body. It's for the people of the living to pay respects to the body because we are not okay. Once they leave their body, they become okay, we hope, depending on when they died. And okay. when so that was the beginning conversations. And then when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. father and I had conversations about mediumship because he would have a lot of psychics come over the house. He was training them, essentially. Okay. So they were in and out of his office and coming out. And I was very, I would peek around the corner wall watching. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I, I said, Daddy, what's going on? And he would explain to me, he's like, I'm working with the psychics to see if they're full of shit or not. <laughs> I said, oh, that makes sense so i wanted to know well what does that mean so it kind of went on from there and so we were always having conversations you know um when i when i had my um when i hit my 20s you know and uh -huh. things were starting to change you know he says alex you'll know you have the ability or going to be a great psychic it's in you i know these things i said oh because now you're the psychic right he goes stop being a smart ass i said well can't help it <laughs> it is coming to this world you and mom and smart ass is what it is so but <laughs> he, he, he always believed he always knew and then when i started writing and publishing you know i did that and i took the name holster even though i had i've been married I put the yeah. name on Holzer because he didn't have a son and I wanted the lineage to continue. Even back then I knew in my early twenties, I knew. Mm -hmm. And so when I started publishing, it was going to be Alexandra Holzer. And that's right. how it began. So it's, it's always been a constant back and forth with my family ever right. since I was a little kid. It's always been that way. You know, so, you know, he's got to be thrilled that you're carrying on the name. Definitely. He's, he is pushing us over here. He doesn't like some things that have been out there. Um, and that's going to change because we're working on other things for him, which I know is the direction of what he would have wanted in life. It's, it's the goal of his in a couple of areas of work. And I'm, I want to make that happen for him and, you know, um, continue that for him as well as where I land in all of that is de it depends on who needs me. And what I can offer, because I just see things in a different way, and I can see ahead, and I try to help people, and I've been told I'm very calming and very easy to talk to. I make people feel very comfortable when they're uncomfortable in situations I might not even be comfortable. I just have an ability to just laugh it off because I'm very genuine. You see, I'm not right. fake. I don't make up shit. I don't try to have a hidden agenda and i think generally that comes off and there's going to be people that hate you for that and resent you and there's going to be people that welcome that so i don't know i have to kind of pick and choose my battles do you you know right. what i'm saying yeah no exactly right yeah, um, you know? have you have you been in contact with him at all since since he's passed yeah constantly yeah it's non-stop because things are when things start happening then mm -hmm. i start having these dreams again with him and they're so they're so vivid. It's like a scene out of a movie, and I know where I'm I'm placed in the scene because it's it's reminiscence of how I grew up. It might be uh, one of the dreams I have. We were in the living room of our apartment where we grew up, and everything else around me is blackened and it's dark. And he and I are sitting across from each other. Okay. And he's sitting there, and there's no conversation, meaning through the mouth. It's all through thought, through our minds, which is ESP. So we're talking to each other as you and I are now in real time, but it's, it's through the mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so he tells me things, and then I sit there, and then I come back at him, and then, you know, he tells it back to me again, and those are the conversations we have. Other times he's, he put me in what looked like a hotel room, and it was overlooking an ocean, so I guess California, because I was going to head back out there, I guess, at some point, which I eventually did. Um, I just didn't think I was going to. 
and he's dressed up in his fedora hat and raincoat. And I remember standing in this hotel room looking out at the beautiful ocean. I know it's hot. I know I'm so, I'm not. And I'm looking at him like, daddy, why are you wearing that? And he just looked at me and laughed. And then he, he, he fades away. So there's a lot of that going on over the years. And then we have on our, um, in our bedroom, my husband built a wraparound bookcase and we have all his books on there. Plus the books he collected I mean, he collected everything on UFOs, everything on parapsychology. We have these old 1700s and change uh, parapsychology, little books that are falling apart. I mean, this, this stuff is phenomenal what we have. I mean, real research, really like very intelligent scholars and so forth that came way before. And so what would happen over the years is these books, they go off the shelf. I'll put down I'll, when I was having wine, cause I told you I'm on whiskey. But I, I, one time I put down my wine glass on the bookcase, which is by the bed. So it's like my little end table, right? And so my husband and I, you know, we're hanging out with the kids, whatever. We're not paying attention. And I put the glass down and I guess it was about to fall. And so I turn around and the glass literally, so I saw it. My husband heard it in shock because it was across from me. And you could hear the, the, the sound of the glass go back and then forth, like shush, shush. And I see it, he hears it. And I look at him like, did you just see that he goes I heard it and it was like my father took the glass and moved it because I was about to fall on on the lean over the bed and hit the shelf which would have knocked the glass over and I, I I knew right away it was him because I would have gotten hurt so there's a lot of that going on and our house is not haunted he is just in and out with other family members we've narrowed it down to eight people in our home some are, are from my husband's family which by the way met my my family on the other side his grandfather and my father knew each other on the other side and then we connected in life and there's a whole story there it's actually a beautiful story soulmate kind of thing for those who are interested in that stuff but i mean it was like they were like matchmaker in heaven literally okay so we're all connected and it, it's it really brings you to the point of that's what life is we're all connected even the people we can't stand or we hate they're still we're all connected whether you like it or not and um so between the dreams and then and then things happen and then we have communication in our room set up and it's constant at times and other times it gets very quiet so we, we've created a chart over the years and we mark the times and when we hear this this particular sound there's different pitches and tones to the sound on this item that we have um and you know sometimes when we're talking in a very important conversation the sound comes out so you know it's it's communication but it, it's a lot of it is the esp work and trying to to kind of hear what they're saying and like when you do Ouija, people sit down and they start a Ouija session and they think, oh, now that the planchet's moving and, I, and you've got enough energy and it's really spelling out words and oh my God, the information is already there in your head, in, your, in the person across from you, how many people you have at the table, whatever. We already have data coming through our mind and it's coming out through the, the board. It's not like it's a hidden message that you're waiting for spirit to give you. The, the, you're, there's nothing private or sacred in your mind. If people struggle Gearheads know that some projects need so many parts, it feels like you need a whole storage unit just to store them. That's what eBay Motors 122 million parts are for. Think of it as your virtual parts garage. They've always got the right fitment at the right prices. Use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. I only believe when you're a psychic or you're in the world of mediumship and you delve into ESP work and all of that, there is right. nothing... They are always around us. And if you're meant to have information or if you're meant to receive information, whether you do your Ouija or a, a, a reading or you do a walkthrough on a case and you're starting to pick up stuff, whether you are the investigator who's supposed to be skeptic or you're, whether you're supposed to just not be the intuitive in that situation, it's there already for you. And either you're going to get it or you're not. That goes into how open and aware you are. So over the years, my father has helped us open up from where he is since he's passed and communicating with him is like, it's, I could already, I, we see it. We know it. We know what the words are. We hear, we hear the sentences and mm -hmm. we stick with it. So yeah, it's, 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 it's funny how you said that he's helping you open up. Um, when I first started doing paranormal investigations, <laughs> I was the most skeptical person on the planet. 
Yeah. Um, I, was, I was doing it mainly because I was having fun. I was uh, with uh, my son at, at the beginning, um, you know, and I wanted to spend time with him, but I really didn't believe that ghosts were that prevalent or that spirits were that prevalent. And after the, my first event, after the first thing happened to me, I started to realize that now over time, I started to become more open to it. And as I became more open to it, I started to realize that everything was there. I just wasn't seeing it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, maybe that's what you mean as far as opening it up, because now I'm starting to realize that there are things that I just wasn't paying attention to. Um, and that's, that's life, isn't it? If you don't pay attention when you cross the street, the, the odds of you getting hit by a car might go up, won't it? Or if you're driving yeah. on the highway and you're not paying attention to the guy that can blindside you with our blind spots at times, maybe it's too sunny out. You know, it, it's everything we do correlates to some some form or fashion in the world of the paranormal because it's actually quite normal there is nothing abnormal about the paranormal and that's yeah, i guess true. my roles to to treat, keep advocating that it's it's not that big of a deal it's just sometimes there are really bad negative energies that may not also be of this world and we're delving yeah. into other things and that's a whole different area but it's in terms of spirituality psychic and ESP and, you know, mediumship and, and researching into those that have died and have moved on, come back, communicated or are stuck, which is what a ghost is, unlike a spirit, hence the term free spirit, it's natural. It's nature. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that kind of leads me to think uh, one, one of the things that uh, your father um, always said was that a scientific investigation can only take you so far that yeah. the equ the equipment can only take you so far and that, and that you have to have, if you don't have your own psychic ability, you should have um, somebody with ability along with you to fully, uh, I, I guess, get everything that's going on. Is, are, do you feel the same way? Uh, yes, I do, because what, what he was trying to advocate was, of course, you know, transmediumship was a very big deal for him, but it wasn't like, you know, I know some people have quoted him saying, oh, you'll need the good trans medium. Ha ha. Okay. Yeah. He's, he said that, but he's also said in the same breath, you just need a good person that has an ability to communicate with the other side an ability to either hear Claire audience an ability, so on and so forth in that area as a tool. So in other words, what he was saying mm -hmm. was you need somebody who can use their body and mind to, to focus, shut everything down in their day-to-day -day life and focus in on the case at hand to really deliver information. And they have to allow their own energy and sacrifice that to, to have whoever needs to talk, talk. So it's almost like we become that voice box for the dead. We become right. that tool like your you know, recorder. And that's really mm -hmm. what... He said, science is only going to take you so far because he was a parapsychologist. That means we don't believe in ghosts. And my father said, I'm going to modernize this damn field. And I'm going to say, mm -hmm. yeah, but let's, let's rethink this. What if we brought in all types of different mediums and psychics and uh, people that have these different abilities to add to the data to get information on this case to either solve it, explain it, or walk away from it with a better understanding of what happens when we die. And that's and, why, and to know. also and to also confirm it. So this way you can see right. that the scientific also is is showing that the uh, the psi ability is is legitimate. That's right. And and it's yeah. it's Holzer method was created and it was birthed from my father taking a step out of the academia world as a parapsychologist to mm -hmm. then say, well, I'm going to work with psychics and mediums and I'm going to start training them and testing them because, you know, he mm -hmm. said 50% of it's bullshit. Yeah. The other half is real. It's And my mother and I just did a recent rare interview um, with Mike Rexler with Down the Rabbit Hole, the edge of the rabbit hole. He's on fit. You guys should know each other if you don't. Um, okay. He's fantastic and he's been around a long time too and he's, he's just cool. phenomenal. And... Cool. She said on, on our interview, she explained, and even in her, and she's 80, 
she was there with my father. She's met a lot of the kooky people and the normal people and everything in between. She goes, very rarely has she come across a really good person that knows stuff, like really accurate. And there's a lot of people who have abilities and they're sometimes on and sometimes off. But to have somebody so precise on a case that's so important, she says it's, it's few and far because we're so caught up in so much. It takes a lot of focus and strength to develop it to become this this really all-seeing seer if you will it's not easy and there's a lot of talent yeah. no doubt you know well i know one of the things that um is hard nowadays it seems like everybody is claiming to be a psychic you <laughs> you and uh, i have a an acquaintance who uh had at first told us that uh they didn't have any psychic ability whatsoever and now they're claiming to be a lifelong psychic medium. So one of the one of the problems, at least for me, is to try and find somebody who is legitimate and yeah. not somebody that is just out there trying to make a name for themselves as a psychic and has a good line of BS. Uh, mm -hmm. And that that's one thing that's, that's really gotten kind of difficult nowadays is because literally everybody claims to be a psychic nowadays. Or a demonologist. Or a demonologist, yeah. The, the 18 and 19 year old demonologist I always kind of just have to laugh at. It's like, yeah, you don't even have life experience outside of high school. Trust me, you're not a demonologist. Well, that's like, you know what it is? It's, that's like watching those scripted TV shows where um, everything is, is witches and demons and you get excited thinking, oh, let's, let's tune into this. This might be a really good series to get into. And they're all like 15 years old leading cast. I'm like, are you yeah. effing? me like yeah, I'm yeah. people at 15 or 20 you're this wizard to be uh which is you know major witch and all this wicked stuff that you're gonna be like out there i'd like you know what i'm saying it's like a lot of this has to be cultivated through time you can be born with the ability more than the person next to you just because of bloodline genetics uh that was what you were born back into this life that's your role to play whatever but the bottom line is you need to grow in age. So if you're 20 to 40, there's a big difference of if you're a psychic at 20 versus 40 versus 50, 60, and so on. It's not to say you, you don't know stuff and that you're not able to help. But it, it, again, it's so convoluted because like I said, anybody can publish a book. Anybody can get on TV now. People are casted for things. I'm like, I scratch my head. I'm in, 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 I'm scripted and scripted. I see all this content out there and we sit there like there's nothing to watch. Not really. We're watching foreign stuff at this point. Alexander, you and I both know drama sells soap, you know? Whatever. I don't what care. Do? I put my foot down as a, as, a, as a weekend warrior in that sense, and I say bullshit. You can still yeah. get out there and be successful and, and help others and spread the message so that you can yes, live you a good can. life and still be entertaining yes. enough and have a following. Bullshit. Yes, you can. Yeah, I exactly. Know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I now, I, I wanted to touch on on one more thing before uh, you have to go, because I know you have a limited time. Um, yes. But can you tell us a little bit more about your work with uh, rescue animals? Yeah, well, it's slowed down over the years, but um, we know a lot of uh, people that um, still pick them up, and we actually inherited, um, they're now four years old, um, two kittens, brother and sister. And we just lost another dog, so we're probably going to rescue another dog um, to replace that one. We were kind of like, okay, we're downsizing, guys. We have five fur babies, now we're down to four. We advocate for them because the ones that are old, the ones that people don't want, because the, the thing of it is, everybody wants the kitten and the puppy. And yeah. we don't advocate that, and we don't advocate buying animals. You've got, there's so many beautiful animals. If you go into a lot of these shelters, there are purebreds in there, believe it or not. You know, you don't yes, know what you're going to find. And if you just connect, if you just, I mean, it breaks your heart. But if you just connect to the shelters and what's needed, you know, and even if you can't rescue or adopt, try to foster an animal and let them have an opportunity to not be in a friggin' cage. You know, these yeah. are, there's so much people could do. You know, $10 goes a long way. Of course, nowadays, everything's so expensive, but if you shop for certain pet food online, you can get it in bulk. Um, you know, Walmart and Amazon's pretty decent and stuff. 
donate to these shelters because they're not making money. But don't buy your animals, you know, and don't always go for the cute, cuddly new ones. You know, the older ones, and I'm not talking old, like five, you know? Yeah. Give them a home and take good care of them. And, you know, it's, it's just to me... We've always advocated that we're probably going to go and save another dog, even though we really, we've got four now, and plus we've got the five kids at home, our other son's in the military. Honestly, we need to downsize, but we're probably not, you know, it's, it's, they are souls, and they're so intelligent, and they're so empathetic, they are so smart, and if, you you know, so... Yeah, you know, I, I have two res- I, ha- I have two rescues here at the house. I got the Great Dane and a God bless you. Bull. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Kitty. I'm, yeah. I'm we have seeing, George Kitty. Huh? I'm, uh, I'm constantly seeing Pete put up things from the uh, uh, some some of the Texas shelters to try and get people to go and look at uh, rescue dogs, um, possibly adopt them. Uh, yeah. My wife, my wife and I, um, I, we jokingly say we have a cat house. Um, <laughs> we we rescue um, feral cats. And uh, at, at, at one point we were uh, bringing them over, getting them fixed and then re-releasing them. Yep. Um, and now we have more cats than we really know what to do with. We have, we have two rescue dogs and- That's um, the problem. And I don't know how you did this. We've got five feral cats and there's three that I haven't seen in about two months. I'm going to have a heart attack. There's two black ones and this beautiful regal gray one. I swear, I'm just going to have a heart attack. So I've only seen the other two and the kids and I. So what will happen is my husband and I are upstairs and then our oldest daughter, she texts us a picture. Look, the, the orange tabby's back with the multi-color tabby and she'll take pictures in the front because we feed the cats with the water and the food. We have now two bowls. Started out as one because then the possum comes out at night and then the blue jays come out in the morning. So everybody's like eating the food. I said, oh my God. And my husband's like, they all need to eat, babe. They all need to eat. So I said, okay. But the feral cats, we've tried, they'll sit in our driveway and they'll sit there and now they'll look at us. And one time, one of our other daughters actually got close enough with food to feed it, but they won't come to the door. We can't even try to get them. So I'm, I worry. And they actually survived the winter here in New York and now it's 80 degrees. So, but every, it makes me really nervous, you know? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, well, I, I know um, I was telling Pete earlier, he didn't know it, but uh, we actually had uh, two squirrels uh, that adopted us uh, as their pets and actually lived in our house. And okay. th- they they made it perfectly clear that we were their pets, not the other way around, which, um, yeah, it, 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 it was really an interesting situation. God bless you. I love it. Yeah. Well, we, we definitely uh, have a soft spot for animals. I guess all three of us do, so... Well, God yes. bless all of you for that. The more, more, and I'll tell you something, it goes a long way. That's, that's good karma. And they're, they're really be discarded. All, all of them, except for snakes. I don't do snakes. Sorry. Not happening. Yeah. I, I, I have a hard time feeding a live thing to a live thing. I just can't do it. No way. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I find it. it hard nowadays to eat. The, the guys at work were actually making fun of me because I was trying to save a bee. And they're like, dude, just step on it. I'm like, no. no. I'm over there picking it, it up and putting it on a flower. And a bumblebee, right? Uh, yeah. It was a, hun- it was a uh, honeybee. Right. Those are great. The, the yellow jet. It takes a lot of ingredients to fix or build a car, like cooking, but without the frozen dinner, easy way out. eBay Motors has 122 million parts. It's always the right fitment, so you can follow any recipe to a T. Whether it's a vintage Italian coupe that's classic like grandma's meatballs or a German luxury car that's as complicated as Oma's Rouladen. To cook up something great in the garage, use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Save big this Green Monday at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get $20 off when you spend $100 or more or get $10 off when you spend $50 or more. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $25. Shop now at academy.com. Exclusions and restrictions apply. While supplies last, see academy.com for details. Jackets and the wasps, they, I don't even know why they were created. What is their purpose other than to be nasty? They are nasty, mean buggers. Right. Yes, they are. And, and and the and the uh, wasps down here in Texas, they carry knives, so you got to watch out for them. I I will anyway. not be going to Texas anytime soon. Thank you very little. <laughs> I'm not go- I'm not going to Texas just because Pete's there. But, well, I, I, I understand. 
Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, do you have to go or can you spend a couple more minutes with us? I'll, keep you, I'll do five more minutes. All right. Okay. Now, I know uh, Alexander is if there's anything that we can do to help you help you out uh, with uh, your father's stuff or anything that we could do to help you out, help you out with your stuff, please let us know, by the way. Yeah, I, definitely. thank you, guys. I appreciate that. I just, you know, um, we're all we all have each other on social media. So anything that comes up I, and when I get the uh, go ahead to post, I'm going to um, just, you oh, know, okay. I, I don't know. I want, I just, you know, for people to go find the books, you know, I think, and, and read them and hear anything, any interviews I've done over the years, there, there's a bazillion of them out there. Learn about what I'm saying, understand that I, I am very aware of the explosion in the field, which is nothing new, but is, is a continuum of what we see still. Um, I, you know, I apologize in advance if I'm offensive to anybody or if I come off a certain way, but I am in a very bizarre, unique position and it only, it comes out of trying to be honest and genuine because I, I'm not looking to impress anybody. Do you know what I mean? I don't need attention. I don't need all that, but it would be nice from time to time to have that respect. And I think, um, I've worked for that, you know, and it, it's, this is pre-existing when my father was still around. I, I've always been in the arts. I went to college for it. Um, you know, I have created my own little designer companies. I'm raising children. I've gone through hardships up and down. You know, now we're fast forward and we've had health issues in the family, very serious, trying to keep this going, you know, and then finding my way in all of this. I would like to, to be, you know, a voice for people in the field and for the work and, and to continue it. You know, I answer questions. I don't, you know, I, I hear stories of people that are in the field and maybe they're, they're more uh, noted than I am. They're more popular or whatever. And they don't answer anybody half the time. They say they will, but they don't, you know, they don't want to do this. They don't want to do it because they're like above it. And there's, there's more of that of what I see, even though they, mm -hmm. in your face, put on a smile and act like they're the most kindest person in the world. They're really not. The rest of us are out there that are actually really answering the questions, answering the emails, taking the time. You know, I do interviews. Right. I end up giving the journalists psychic readings if it comes through, and I end up, if it makes sense, I just go for it, and I tell them right off the bat. You know, I'm just going to tell you what I feel and see if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's not like they're paying me or anything. I just felt to do it because I appreciate them taking an interest in me. You know, right. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Um, I have some friends that um, before they were on TV, I could call them and talk to them, uh, ask advice and things like that. Then they would get on a TV show. And I, it, it, there, there have been some people who have just made, you know, like a guest appearance and then were too famous in their own mind to even talk to me anymore. And it's kind of like, wait, what? My father was, was the it guy in his heyday, and he never acted like that. We had people, like a revolving door in my apartment growing up. I, don't, I can't even tell you who half of them were. But I'll tell you, they weren't anybody special in, in terms of what they've accomplished in life. And they just needed to be heard. They needed to express their uh, situation, their story. And my father created that environment for them. Not once did he ever make the phone number uh, private. It was a, a published phone number in the yellow pages. Um, the phone rang off the hook. He had three phone lines. Um, you know, he did every interview he was asked to do. He did all of it. Half he got paid, half he didn't. And that's who I am too. And that's, that's, that's the holes are wet. And that's, it's just not going to change. And it would be great to be fruitful in other areas. Why not? That's, you know, hello, who doesn't, you know, that's, you right. know, I eat. And we have a big family, so I don't I don't apologize for any of that bullshit. That's part of life, dude, you know, unless you want to give yeah. us stuff free. Um, you know, I, um yeah, I'm sick that just makes me sick. And and I see on, on social media how people are so apt to quick to follow stuff that's I see things that are posted that get all these likes and comments, and then other things that are posted are so much more deep and important and a great message, and they get not even nearly a tenth of that. It's like, no. where's mine? It's like, so those types of people for me, whatever. I don't, I'm not interested. 
you know like that that's what you think is great go right ahead and yeah exactly i you know uh my my buddy uh bob davis uh he, he and i are, are trying to put together a um a, a, an instructional lecture as it were yeah that, um is to help people understand different ways of uh, investigating and researching and things like that. And mm -hmm. because it, it, it comes across as an educational tool, right. um, everybody keeps turning it down. Oh, we don't <laughs> want that. We, we need, we need to have something that'll thrill, uh, the audience and we're over there going, okay, yeah, but you're, you're thrilling them. And yet tomorrow they're going to go out thinking they're hunting demons. And it's just kind of like the, the priorities have been skewed. And it's it's really kind of annoying. It's there's sensationalism going on, and as long as there's a platform with people in the power positions to push those agendas, there will always be a market for it, which means there will always be an audience, and that's fine. But it doesn't mean there isn't a market for the other stuff either, my dear. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Colleges open no. back up. You know, I have by us, I have um, one of our local community colleges, which is actually pretty well known for their nursing program, et cetera, et cetera. Um, right. They were so excited that I contacted them last year. I said, I would love to lecture and, and teach a course there. They were like, oh my God, what is it? I said, I don't know. I said, I do, but I don't. <laughs> like, I wasn't sure you guys even were going to say yes. So now I'm going to go work. Thank you. And I created this huge outline, but then everything shut down. So I was getting ready for the spring to to actually work locally by us to do these um ghost tours my father used to do these ghost hunt tours believe it or not and um oh. so wow. there's a there's a place by us that's actually very haunted and laced with a lot of great history including housing a um an, an old little dinosaur so i had done a hunt with holzer event there it was very successful and they said could you take over and create our tour group again because we lost the person that did it and then of course COVID hit and so now everything's closed, but it's the same thing with the colleges. This is, these types of lectures and information, as long as you're a storyteller and can present it, and people are really interested, it'll still be entertaining because you have to interact with your, your, your students, you know? Right. You gotta allow them to, to ask you questions and see what's on their minds. So you got a sense of what, where they're coming from too. You just don't wanna mm -hmm. talk to people and lecture. You have to let them engage with you and say, okay, well, you know, and then flip it. The whole point is education and education you got to use your fucking head you don't want to sit right. there with a slideshow to be entertained and oh here comes a demon photo supposedly i mean if that's what people are doing that's what to me those are those events that sometimes happen okay go at it or or you know but that's not really how my father did it and he was very successful in doing it and reaching a lot of people it's it's just not done as much i think maybe you know yeah i we uh Every year, uh, Bob and I uh, go to uh, the anthropology department, and we give a lecture in one of the professor's classes. And every year, she says that that is the one class that all of her students take away from the whole year. That's and awesome. Yeah, and, and we have so much fun with it because we, we'll, we'll talk for maybe 20 minutes, and then we'll open it up to discussion, questions, and yep. things like that. And Perfect. We, we will not uh, turn down any question. Literally, any of the questions the students have, we will answer to the best of our ability, whether it be from a, a true believer or the ones we have the most fun with are the, the complete and total skeptics. Yeah. And we, we just have so much fun with the class and, and the, the students themselves seem to really enjoy it. And we don't do the whole sensationalized thing. Uh, we try and present it down to earth and how it really is rather than how it is on TV. Right, and that's uh, what you think, and there's an understanding. Some of it's for entertainment, and some of it maybe you can take away some important information. But, you know, for me, it's like, at least when you watch the other show with my father's work in it, some of it is, is obviously him because it's his, his reels and his audio. But... The rest of it's based on the way it's done, and I, I it's not has anything to do with me. But the, the the authentic part of it that you get to witness and, and experience is real. So if you go back fifty plus years and put yourself in that time and place of where he was, if you have the books to follow along, you yourself can 
put yourself into that case by reading the actual chapter on it and you'll get more out of that than anything else because like i said you know it's it's there's no slideshow or picture show that's going to you know half of it you have to do the work and so what you guys are doing is great you know because that's that's the whole point i mean i remember the first time i did my first lecture there was one guy that was falling asleep in the front and i was actually really being funny like i'm not saying it like i was just because i was like nervous and i just mm -hmm. winged and he's and I just looked at him and I'm like, so we finished up my sentence and I looked at him and said, am I keeping you awake? Is there an issue? Did you need me to do a little dance for you? Like, you know, <laughs> I up, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, yeah, should be. Now you're not getting a free book, you douche. You know, like, <laughs> you know not to be asleep in my class the first time that I'm doing this lecture. It wouldn't have happened that way. But now you, you lost the book. For you. <laughs> yeah. You didn't you, you didn't huck an eraser at him? I didn't have any. If I did something. <laughs> the next if I ever go on the lecture circuit and I and I go speak somewhere, if I do if I do an event, I will be armed. You better believe it. Trust me. I, I, was gonna say, <laughs> I, I hope so. You know what you should have done is you should have thrown that free book at him and woke him up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on my feet then that was a long time ago i was just excited to be there you know how it goes i was like oh yay yeah. but i yeah. was just gotta be kidding me but you know whatever it, it's you, you have to find your way and you can't pay attention to what's out there what's always going to be out there who gives a shit focus on what you're doing and and it doesn't mean that things can't be revamped edited changed you know, if you've got a good thing going and the students are into it, then there's not much for you to really do. You just keep having the ability to offer it. And that's right. part of the whole point. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and it's well, really a plus you know, when you enjoy it. Well, you know, I was doing 101s for a while, and I would, and uh, my students wanted to give wanted me to uh, give certificates, and you know, I don't know, they, they, it was a certificate of accomplishment, and uh, I was contacted one time that um, they had they had broken into a cemetery, and they were carrying my certificate, and the police had contacted me and, and saying that they were telling trying to tell me that I told them how to do it. So oh, I, st I stopped. God. I stopped doing one. I stopped doing the one hundred ones and giving certificates for a little while, because I was figuring I, I was trying. I, I was giving them a license to do this, you know, in, in a way. And right. uh, I had I had to rethink that. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe on the bottom of the certificate, if you continue that, you can say disclaimer: this doesn't give you the right to break into any place reportedly haunted, including and not yeah. excluding from cemeteries, et cetera, et cetera. This is to certify you completed my course. Great job. Now yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah, I should have exactly. done that. I just, I just stopped, I just stopped giving certificates. But uh, yeah, I should probably, should probably yeah. done that. It takes all kinds in this world. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're going to come across stupid stuff and that's fine. You just, you know, you laugh it off, but you stick to the point. And I know that my father, you know, get the message out there. We are all worker bees here too. And some of us have different situations than others. Some of us are similar and run paradoxical. But you know, the bottom line is just be a good person, do the work and and stop looking for agendas and stop looking for glorification because at some point, let's say you get it and you're on the top of the, the world of the paranormal and what all that stuff, it's not gonna last. At some point you're it's gonna come full circle. And if if how you your behavior is is not really true to everything. It's not like you can hide it. Maybe in the physical world, but there is another world around that. Several, actually. Yeah. And it's going to come back full circle. And that, to me, is very scary. And so, you know, I would rather be a good person and, and go through it properly and deal with the bullshit because that's what teaches you when you move on to the next thing of what not to deal with, who you don't want to be around. Oh, you don't know karma me? will get you. Karma yeah. will get you. It's real. I've seen it. It is. Yeah. It so, is. Well, guys, I, I appreciate all of you, and I thank you for listening to me ramble. Oh no! Believe hey, me, you, we we this, this we is, should be thanking you so much for uh, this. Um, you are absolutely fantastic. Trust me, you were not rambling at all. Um, would you uh, Would you be willing to come back on? 
I would. I would. I and I've told some other people recently. I want to just wait to have some other things to talk about. I, I think because everybody keeps going towards that show, and I just don't want to do it anymore. I don't. I don't feel to. I don't have to. I'm not obligated to. I wasn't included okay. to do so. Do you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people. And, and I get. I, it's very sweet. And that is my name up there too. You know. But I, I just. I think unless you want to hit on certain subject matter and you want to sure. hear my opinions on stuff and some of the stuff that I have found over here, I'll do that. Well, of course. I'll tell you what, if, uh, if there's anything that you ever want to specifically talk about, just let us know. Uh, cause we're, uh, we're basically well, open uh, to any conversations. Uh, so if there's something would, specific you want to bring to life, is, please feel sure. free. Certain oh, subjects you- that are, would you, be, would you would you be open to uh, discussing uh, your father's cases, like maybe Amityville or something like that? I can a little bit. I'm actually working on that right now. Uh, I've, okay. I've, 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 I've used that as an example. Yeah, no, well, that's, of course, one of the noted ones. But I'm actually working on something right now. So maybe I'll have something that I can talk about at some point this year on that. Sure. Can, okay. And then well, I can I'll let you guys know. At, at okay. some point, awesome. um, I would love to hear about the uh, Graves End. Case. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. was I was right in the middle of reading that. I was just about to get to the part where your father came in and my son threw the book out. And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lane Mercanda. Well, you know the medium that worked on that case. She's actually a psychic. Um, does a, she did a lot of CSI kind of work and at, at one point worked with the FBI up here in New York. Lives a few towns with me. She's still around. Um, you guys want to look her up? Her name is Marissa Anderson. Okay. Um, he was the psychic that worked on the case with my father, and I believe, before I let you guys go, years and years ago when Sci-Fi was the channel that they kind of were, um, I had gotten an email from a colleague of mine in the field and said, um, hey, they just did this case out in uh, about this demonic whatever, possession case, blah. I said, oh yeah, Gravesend. I said, well, I think they just used the case with your father and a psychic, but didn't give your father any credit. And I said, what? And then my sister goes and emails me the next day, like, did did daddy just have something on the, on air? And I said, I, I, I'm looking into it. Give me a minute. Yes, yeah, so I looked it up. And apparently they, they had done a, uh, a story on that case. I guess Elaine had worked with the network, but it's not my book. You know, my father contributed to the book, did work on the case for her was a, a very friendly to her, but All I right. think issues with when they were on location and, you know, Marissa tends to get a little bit, she's in the zone, you know, her job is to be All that right. good psychic. And I think there was issues with the owners or something, which is not unusual when you're working on a case and you bring in your own people that are a good team of experts and really are good at what they do. Sometimes right. homeowners get weird, you know, so there was kind of stuff going on, I think. And anyways, they took the case, I guess, through her, and they depicted a man in a hat and a raincoat. Gee, who could that be? Alongside the yeah. woman who was the psychic. Who could that be? So, so I remember being reintroduced to that case. This is probably over 10 years ago, honestly. And I was angry. And I had to explain to my sister. She's like, well, what is that? I said, you know, because my father had just passed, I think, that, that year after. And I said, it's on sci-fi. I said, I, I said, they can do that apparently, because they didn't mention him. It wasn't his word verbatim. It was her story in, about her home. And they took the case work of that was my father and a psychic, and they put it in there as a reenactment. Yeah. Oh, well, I know, it, it was like um, I was talking to Johnny Zappas, and uh, he was laughing at the movie Haunting in Connecticut. He was yeah. like, yeah. He goes, I think that was supposed to be me, but I don't remember ever being a terminal cancer patient. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it's amazing what kind of poetic license they can take. Anyway, listen, Alexander, we have kept you way too long, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, for coming on for our first show. It, it really means a lot to us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, my dears, and I will talk to you all soon, and I'll see you guys online anyway, so we're all there. We're all connected. Yep, definitely. Thank you. Anyway, thank you so much, and you thank- have a great rest of your evening and enjoy your whiskey. I finished it, but thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then I'll, I'll try and do for us. <laughs> I will. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. uh, thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.
That was a great interview. It, it was. She she is she was is such a, a sweetheart. Yes, she is. And I'll tell you what. Are you ready? Angie? Are you ready? Who me? Yes. Are you ready for are, are you ready for some strange and weird news? She's I not am. answering. I am. I am ready for some strange and weird news. Angie? I got it for you. Do you? You're really quiet. You do. I know. She didn't she didn't kid it no at all. I was like, wow. I kept waiting for her to pop well, yeah, in. I, I can't like, get a word in edgewise with y'all. <laughs> I know. Pete, stop it. Jeez. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> What kind of weird, strange news do you have for us, ma'am? Okay, well, here's some stuff to think about then. Okay. Um, <laughs> in March, a paranormal tourism study was published in Cornell Hospitality, and it noted a couple of interesting but not very surprising facts about companies that don't use paranormal marketing as a business model. So okay. one of those is businesses with tighter profit margins tend to have a higher rate of paranormal promotion. Um, another one is that they tend to engage and retain customers more than businesses that don't, I hate to use the term exploit, but that don't tout that type of uh, characteristic of their business. Um, they are provided with lots of program and retail marketing opportunities. Um, think, you know, exit through the gift shop kind of stuff. <laughs> and um, the what do they have? What do they have at the gift shop? <laughs> I don't know. I'll keep quiet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. Merch, go on. Go merch. On. Merch. Um, and then the uh, marketing. The experiential marketing really brings to life the characteristics of a place and testimonials through, like, the social media and word of mouth. Those are really powerful. And all you have to do is, you know, think about your favorite Zoomer Instagrammer, and there you go. So that's not very surprising, but it is kind of interesting as far as, you know, normally we think of – like famous haunted locations, you know, places that um, maybe became famous because of the things that went on there, not someone trying to make their bed and breakfast fit into a paranormal type box. But um, I just so, thought it was kind of interesting nonetheless. So is that what you mean by paranormal marketing? Um, marketing the place that has spirits, that has hauntings? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, I, I guess. I, um, hey, hey don't, don't, don't tell her not to say sir. I like that. I mean, she can call me sir all she wants. Oh, here we you, go. I'm not Southern. You, not, I don't know what to you. say. You don't call Pete that, though. He doesn't deserve it. No. <laughs> go on, go, go no. on, go on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so it, there are companies who use the paranormal aspect as part of their business model and there are companies who sort of kind of almost try to force it um and the the first bullet point that they had listed in the study about the businesses that have the tighter profit margins um tend to lean towards the paranormal sort of I guess, label. Um, and I mean, I, I, they, well, they did mention some people in the study, but I did not notate who they were because there was no point to actually talk about the businesses themselves. But, um, you know, it stands to reason that if you're not sure you're going to be able to pay your mortgage or your employees, that you need to come up with some aggressive uh, marketing and, it seems like maybe sometimes they stretch the truth on things. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out when you say forced uh, paranormal marketing, 
are you trying to say that um, they might be trying to say that there is a spirit there and there actually isn't? Or I'm trying to I'm trying to figure yeah, out how you, you force. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> oh, OK. So I got gotcha. you. So a, a hotel that is so seedy that nobody wants to go there they're going to start marketing that, okay, well, we have, we have a bunch of spirits, so let's market it to the paranormal people in the hopes that they come and believe that we actually do have spirits. Or they dress up a wino in the corner with a sheet over them and watch them stumble around. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pete, you, you do know that now what I'm doing, I, I am now picturing Pete with the sheet over his head, walking around with his hands out going, ooh, you know, this is, this is something that I am never going to be able to get out of my head. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, definitely don't blame me for that. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I'll, I'm, I blame Pete for everything. Um, yeah, you know, the... You, have you all heard of the uh, the Cecil Hotel? It's now uh, the Stay on Main sure. in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, that's where uh, where that's where uh, Lamb was found, right? Yeah, that's where Elise Lamb was found. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been down there a couple times, and I have talked to some of the people that work there, mm -hmm. and there is not one single person that works there who has ever said anything about it being haunted. Literally, nobody. Um, no matter how many times I've gone down there, I talk to them. They're like, no, we don't, we don't know what you're talking about. We've never heard anything. We've never seen anything. Well, don't um, they have to, and, haven't they, have they signed paperwork stating that they can't talk about it? Not that I know of. Um, I, thought, but I, I thought I read something about that. Well, I know, I know Disney has, you, you, you sign a, a non-disclosure at Disneyland, but I haven't heard that at the Cecil hotel. And as a matter of fact, it seems like, um, with the amount of people talking about the ghosts there, that they would actually want the talk because it would bring more people in, kind of what uh, well, Andrew's talking about well, as far as the uh, paranormal uh, well, advertising. Well, Zach Baggins has been trying to get into there for the longest time, and they won't let him in. Well, Honestly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that really kind of surprises me. Uh, it would it would most likely cause a lot of people to uh, go down and um, want to stay there. So I don't know. Maybe maybe they do. I, next time I go down there, I'll ask. But uh, yeah, I, I just when when you said um, forced paranormal advertisement, the first thought that came through my head was uh, was the Cecil Hotel because uh, I, I just keep hearing all of these things about how haunted it is, but then nobody there will say anything about it. And I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I've been to a lot of different places, and I have, if, if there are ghosts somewhere, you will usually find at least one person, uh, confidentiality agreement or not, that will talk about it, and nobody there yeah. ever has. And a $20 bill will make them talk about anything. Okay, send me some money. Whether I'll it's get, true I'll, or not. Whether it's true or not. What? Hey, a $50 bill, they'll make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what and i've why, got what, some stuff to tell you pete why why am i why am i doing this um because you because you love you love it uh, no no pete you know my voice is going again yeah it's too it's too late I'm to gonna, call in sick all right I'm gonna have to call it takes a lot of ingredients to fix or build a car like cooking but without the frozen dinner easy way out eBay Motors has 122 million parts. It's always the right fitment, so you can follow any recipe to a T. Whether it's a vintage Italian coupe that's classic like grandma's meatballs or a German luxury car that's as complicated as Oma's Rouladen, to cook up something great in the garage, use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. At Capella University, education is as smart as the world around us. With the FlexPath format, you can take classes at your own pace, set your own deadlines, and even leverage your previous experience to move faster. Now that's smart. Learn more at capella.edu. Call in sick for the rest yeah, it's of the show. too late to call in sick. Yeah, you know, folks, we, ha we had a running bet. We didn't know who was going to be calling in sick for the first show, by the way. I, I figured it would be Pete. Yeah, I figured it would be, I, I, I figured it would be Brian. 
Well, and, you know, uh, you know uh, you're we, actually... we, all, we, all, we all figured it would be Angie doing it by herself. Oh, that would have been interesting. Hey, there's always next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you, I've had you're, to you're do kind of... a lot more with a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> So, Angie, do you have any more news for us? Um, well, let's see. Um, do you want... I need a yeah, wheel. Yeah, we want everything. We want everything. You want everything? Yeah, if, want you have, if you have it, we'll take it. Yes. All right. Um, a few weeks ago, there was a team of plan planetary scientists and researchers from MIT, and they tested um, E. coli and yeast in two, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in three separate environments. Um, one was pure hydrogen, one was pure helium, and the other was regular air. <clears throat> Both organisms survived in pure hydrogen, although it was uh, slower growing. And okay. so the knowledge that organisms live in oxygen, that they can also live in areas without any oxygen is a pretty big thing because that means that astrobiologists can focus on planets that have a hydrogen layer in the ongoing quest to find signs of life elsewhere in the universe. You know, I think I, I, think I heard that's about that. That's pretty significant. That's pretty yeah. significant. Wasn't it, and wasn't, the, wasn't the research done like a, around one of the, I want to say one of the moons of Jupiter? Or am I thinking of something else? Um, I know that they have, but yeah, I did not see anything about that in this study. Yeah, maybe I'm just getting a couple of things mixed up. At my age, that happens. Because they, they do say that primarily um, the planets that have the hydrogen atmosphere tend to be rocky planets. Okay. Which, you know, science. <laughs> um, but kind of interesting because it makes you think that you know, there's life that can be existing on these other planets somewhere and maybe they can still breathe and exist in our atmosphere even though it's totally different from where they came from. Huh. Sounds interesting. It does sound interesting. Which just sort of means start, that right? Yeah, definitely. That that just sort of means that uh, there's probably some form of life on some of the other planets within our own solar system. Sure, Mars, atta water. Mars attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they're coming here anytime soon if, if they can. Not catch now. Our, our I was going to say, I wouldn't. <laughs> Not now. I, I, as a matter of fact, if I had the opportunity, if I had the opportunity to go on, go on to Mars or the Moon or something, I'd go right now myself. Yeah, well, yeah, we'd we'd kind of like you to go there, actually. Yeah, I'm you know, sure there'd be a whole. I'm Pete, sure that'd I be. Just, I'm sure that. Well, go ahead. I just had a great idea. Um, yeah, I know. I smell. I smell wood burning. Go ahead. The the, the SpaceX. Um, Mm -hmm. Corporate offices are only about 12 miles from me, give or take. Yeah, I will yeah, but I'm in Texas, than, so it doesn't matter. I, I will be more than happy to go down there, see if I can uh, uh, secure a ride for you. Uh, we'll, we'll, ride we'll, for bla me. we'll blast you off to Mars, and you we can do one of the live shows from Mars. From Mars. Yeah, you can be on I'll, Mars. I'll we'll listen, one of the shows I'll from Mars. love to hear me from Mars. But just, hey, just remember, you'll have to take your helmet off while on Mars. Oh, so, oh, actually, oh, so they can the get show. a clearer, so they can get a clearer voice, right? It, exactly. So we can hear you better. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, no, sense. no, no. See, you. It's okay, Pete. I got gotcha. you. I know exactly how to install a helmet kit. You're good. Okay. All right. All right. As long as you can with me. Angie. No. You're fired. <laughs> Oh. No. <laughs> well, Pete, as long as am I, I going to get my last it. paycheck? You didn't exactly. Get your You're not going to get your first paycheck. You kidding, <laughs> kidding <me? laughs> Heard that uh, before. So, uh, yeah, I got more, or? Uh... Uh, yeah, I've got more. All right, well, I'm let's have full. it. Okay. Uh, scary. Um, <laughs> 
Um, let's see where to go next. All right. So let's say you're tired of taking pics of your handheld FLIR unit. I mean, that's a huge problem, right? Because it's big and bulky and heavy. And then you have to try to take a picture of what it's showing with your phone. And it, it's a mess, right? Uh, right. The problem has been solved. It <laughs> I know it's a solved. very, very prolific issue. Okay. <laughs> the people struggle with it constantly, I'm sure. Um, but recently, FLIR came out with a new camera, and it's called the C5 Compact Thermal Cam. It's the size of your average point-and-shoot camera. It has true thermal imaging through the multispectral dynamic imager, and it's a 5 megapixel. It's water and dust protected as well, and it is drop protected up to 2 meters. Uh, it gives so users integrated camera. tools for – I'm sorry? I'm going to get divorced over this camera, aren't I? <laughs> the only way you're going to you know be able what? to afford it. <laughs> How you present this or don't present it to – that's entirely up to you. I'm not mm -hmm. getting in the middle of that. Okay. Um, but just to get you in even more trouble, uh, <laughs> there are integrated tools for easy image sharing, and there's cloud storage via Wi-Fi connection, and – what I have found is that the MSRP is six hundred and ninety nine dollars from FLIR. I I am gonna get divorced over this camera. You I'm know, actually there gonna are a lot worse things you could get divorced over, so don't worry about it. Hey Pete, you think that's bad? I'm gonna have to sell my wife just to be able to afford it. Um, Problem solved. <laughs> Matter of fact, my wife is telling me right now you want that camera more than me. Yeah, well, I'm I'm just I'm now afraid to go back into the house, so I will be moving in with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago in Uvalde, and that's in Texas, um, not too far from San Antonio, a swarm of millions of Mexican free tail bats from the Frio Bat Cave showed up on weather radar. There were so many awesome. of them. Exactly. I I saw this and was like, oh, I have to tell people about this because. So cool. Um, a San Antonio meteorologist whose last name I cannot pronounce, I'm not even going to try. Um, his first name is Chris. He sounds lovely. Um, he said that they're <laughs> often easily recognized as a ring on radar. Um, oh, as a what? A, a ring? A ring formation. A ring? Okay. I, I am not a meteorologist. I've never seen it. Um, wow. However, this time they appeared on screen to be, they thought it was a storm core. And eventually there were enough thunderstorm gusts um, and they were dispersed and the bat formation became more identifiable as that. You mean it was and a bat NATO? Bat NATO. A yes. what? A bat NATO. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I mean, there are huge colonies of bats in Texas, and there are, you know, probably five I can name off the top of my head um, that I've gone to multiple times. And if you have ever seen one of the larger bat colonies exit, the, the one in specific I'm thinking of is um, down in South Texas. Um, it is like a tornado of them emerging from the cave. And oh, yeah. I remember... Out. I was a, a little kid and my dad and I were out um, on a ranch and it was starting to get dark and we just gotten back to the truck and we were sitting in the truck and all of a sudden it started shaking back and forth and probably, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands or millions, but the entire truck was being shaken and enveloped by a bat colony as it was emerging the cave at night. Yeah, it's like a bad Scooby Doo cartoon, man. When they come out. Yeah, oh, it, it was so cool. You know, with, yeah, with you men with you mentioning Bat NATO, I'm I'm picturing this whole thing on sci-fi. I have a feeling there's going to be a new movie out, a new NATO movie. Well, well there were five there were five Shark NATOs, so they're due to be a Bat NATO movie. Oh well, they, yeah, they could probably they could probably get at least eight or nine that NATO movies out of that. Definitely. Oh, I'm sure. I'm mm -hmm. sure. I don't know. I think maybe they need to wait on that. 
But that's cool though how they show up on on the on the dop on the dopper doppel doppel. And see, I didn't Doppler. know that they did. <laughs> I didn't. I was waiting to see did. how long it would take you to get it right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And he did actually give it a name of the type of imaging that it was. It was nothing I was familiar with. It wasn't just Doppler. It wasn't, you know, and it wasn't like one of their, um, like, proprietary pet names they give it, like, you know, the eye in the sky or whatever, you know. It wasn't one of those. It was an actual, like, scientific name of the type of imaging, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I should have written that down. You, you know, the Pete keeps trying to get me to come out to Texas. Um, I have a, a friend of mine that lives in Amarillo. She keeps trying to get us to come out to Texas. I keep, you know, I'm from California. We have, well, we we'll have hold that against you. And, you know, uh, I, I keep hearing about tornadoes in Amarillo. I keep, uh, my, my mother-in-law lived in Houston. So it, it was so hot there. We would have to go from our, uh, air conditioned house to the air conditioned car to the air conditioned uh, business we were going to. Now there's bats, tarantulas. Uh, Don't forget uh, the cockroaches. They have they have scorpions. It's like you know what? As bad and as expensive as California is, yeah, no. I'm not. I'm not coming to Texas. It's like, no, it's there's not a reason as why no, we don't have. It is not as, it is not as expensive Cal as California. Trust me. Oh no no no! That's what I'm saying. As expensive as California is, we 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 don't have bat natos. You know, uh, it, it doesn't get that hot unless you're in the Mojave Desert. Uh, I don't think I have ever seen a tornado here. I'm just like, yeah yeah, I'm gonna stay. <laughs> My sister keeps trying to get me to live in uh, Michigan, where they have snowfall in June. She's like, nope nope, California. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll live in a tent, which is about all I'll be able to afford when I retire. But hey, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep talking about Texas. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. What you what you got? Any, anything more there, Angie? Okay, so last week, um, a man in Ohio named Chad uh, videoed what he says is evidence of haunted dolls. He was home alone when he took cell phone video of three separate things occurring. Um, and one clip, a large doll in the back of a wood and glass cabinet slid up to the front corner of the case. In the next, a smaller doll in the front fell over onto the bigger doll. And in the third clip, an item of clothing falls off a small stack of clothes that were on the arm of the sofa. Uh, you he know, claims this is not the, the first time that he witnessed the dolls moving. Um, personally, I couldn't find the original video. All I was able to find were pieced to together clips. Um, and some of it was vertical they were, video. You think they were, I'm sorry? You think they were edited? You think they were edited? I mean, like they made, made were, edited? They definitely were edited in the way of um, either uh, like cutting down like the time, or I mean, or, I mean, produced edited, like to make it look like it was haunted. Well, what I will say, and I I hate calling people, you know, not being truthful. I I hate saying that I don't think they're being completely honest about what's going on but what what i am gonna say is in my opinion um excuse me the motion of the dolls depending on you know how the case is put together and if the door in the front opened like a regular cabinet or whatever i couldn't tell right right um but if there was some kind of seam on that edge that mm -hmm. vertical edge then I, it very easily could be outside manipulation to make that happen. For sure. okay. it, it's interesting that you bring this up because Pete and I were actually talking about dolls on the radio show we were on yesterday. And uh, you know about Wyatt um, and how he's kind of been moving around once in well, a while. Okay. okay, first of all, let's back up for a second. Our listeners might not know about Wyatt. 
Can you give a oh. little bit of a rundown of what Wyatt is? Yeah, a, 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 br a brief description of Wyatt. Wyatt is a very funky looking bobblehead doll. Um, he's got a, a funky beard, mustache, really bushy eyebrows, a hat with a, a feather sticking out of it, and this little tiny gun with giant feet. And he, I, I picked him up at a, at a ghost town. Um, and the guy that owned him said he was cursed. Well, I, I don't believe in curses. And Wyatt has a tendency to um, be places where he wasn't supposed to be. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. We, we won't, I won't go into the whole story. Uh, but I just found, find it interesting that we were talking about haunted dolls yesterday. And then you, you find this, uh, you know, to, uh, for, for the audience today. Uh, I, I had received a... Um, another doll with a, a really big doll with a with a porcelain uh, head from my friend actually in Amarillo she uh, she has a, an antique store uh, right on route 66 and again she said it, it did weird things and I was always kind of like eh, eh, whatever because um, I really wasn't into the whole haunted doll thing but <clears throat> I just put her into the laundry room when when we got home from uh, from the trip and then started to notice that every time I would walk into the laundry room, it looked like her, her, she was following me. Her, her eyes were following me. Now it could just be, you know, uh, because Sonia told me that, you know, that type of thing happened. So it could just be me projecting, but it just, it, it, it just seems kind of interesting to me that you come up with a story about haunted dolls. We were just talking about it. Apropos. <laughs> That is kind of interesting since I don't see a whole lot of that happening anyway, but, um, you know, I, I do feel kind of bad for the guy because, you know, he was home alone. His wife had left for a while and he was, he sounded disturbed, but I mean, I'm clothes falling. Like, I I have had a lot of experience piling up clothes that didn't want to get folded, and I've seen them fall, <laughs> like, you know, okay, pretty now, easily. I I have to ask: Were the clothes his or his wife's? Well, from what I could tell, and I'm not really sure because, again, the this guy is not in you know any kind of like video grad program or anything. Um, the video is shaky and it it's not well i guess what i could say is because he wasn't anticipating something happening it wasn't completely in the frame uh, well i, I had then a reason again, for asking maybe, maybe he was trying on his wife's clothes couldn't figure out how to put them back and came up with the story so she didn't know he was trying on her clothes Oh man, okay cuz see it there it was a white sports bra all right <laughs> okay <clears throat> So, see, maybe I am psychic. <laughs> now, that's what it looked like to me. But, again, it wasn't fully in frame. And he was just sort of panning across the room. And, I mean, you could still see it fall, but you didn't see a whole lot from that side, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, kind of the same thing with the cabinet, you know. And I, I don't want to call a guy a liar, that's for sure, but um, there's definitely room for skepticism in that story. Gotcha. And I got one more, and then we can get back to whatever. <laughs> yeah, we, we, um, we have about, what, uh, about 10 minutes here, so uh, we'll make, make this a quick one and then kind of explain how we want to proceed with the show. But uh, go ahead. Keep going. All right. So... Uh, this one's been, it, this has actually happened multiple times. This hasn't, this isn't just like a single occurrence, but um, there's a house in Youngsville, Louisiana that is being given uh. away again. Yep. And the woman is uh, saying that it's reported or that it's haunted by her great grandmother who lived and died in the home. She's supposedly a friendly spirit who loves to cook. And so if, when you experience the hauntings, it will probably be clanging pots and pans if you decide to take the offer. But just with everything else, it seems too good to be true. There's always that catch, and you have to move 
the house off the property at your own expense. Yep. I, I had just heard about that house uh, a couple of days ago. Now, whether the story is true or not, I don't know, but supposedly a group of paranormal investigators went into the house, got so scared that they ran screaming from it and swore they would never go back. And I'm thinking to myself, now what they should have done is what Ghost Adventures does. They should have just locked themselves in, then they couldn't have gotten out. I mean, you know, if, if, if you're a scared paranormal investigator, you need to be locked in. Jeez. Sorry, if you're a scared I, paranormal investigator, you might be in the wrong line of work. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. I just, I had to go there. <laughs> it is true, though. I did, okay. see that, I did see that story a couple days ago about investigators that ran screaming from this house. And I was just like, okay, it's her grandmother. How scary can she be? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some people's grannies are awfully mean. Uh, well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but I, I, it's it's amazing how how often that that house keeps coming up in uh, news feeds and things. Um, I thought I had heard though that somebody finally did agree to buy it. Had you heard anything about that? I didn't find anything that said anything that anyone had spoken for it or, huh. you know, was willing to go for it. Um, I mean, if you have a ton of money, then that's fine. Go for it. But they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere from what I've right. been able to figure out. And they're going to have to move that thing miles down a dirt country road once they get it off the family property. Right. And then and, uh, setting it back on a new foundation and everything else would just be costly. And they're having a really, really hard time with – now – I guess one of the things that they're really concerned about is saving the trees. And that sounded way stranger than it really is. Um, they want to keep the trees around the home intact. And, you know, the problem with that is that, I mean, I have seen them cut homes up in pieces, obviously, to move places. And, you know, it can be rebuilt somewhere else or whatever, but... It just seems like an awful, awful large expense for a house that was only built in, like, the 20s or 30s. Exactly. Oh, well, um, you know, so maybe, my, maybe my somebody will buy it. Uh, it. Well, I mean, maybe. Yeah, well, I, they're, yeah, hopefully. It is big, and it does have... Uh, and it does have central AC. Yeah. So that's um, a thing. Exactly. All right. Uh, so we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so I just wanted to kind of let people know that uh, next week uh, we have um, Marie D. Jones is our guest. She'll be with us for, for the uh, full two hours. And uh, we'll be talking with her about everything from super volcanoes to uh modern day witches um and all kinds of different subjects apparently marie um has a, a really wide um base of knowledge ab about a bunch of different things um pete pete knows her uh, yes uh, why don't you explain a little bit about marie uh, for our uh, for our listeners oh, she, oh, oh she's got a wide base uh between parapsychology metaphysics uh, I mean, she, you name it, you, she can discuss just about anything. Uh, occult. Uh, she's written about, oh, heck, about 10, 10 12 books. Um, even, it, she even, uh, I think her, her current book uh, right now is based off of uh, uh, ghost stories that were uh, sent in by uh, listeners. Uh, I mean, not, excuse me, not listeners. Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, by uh, uh, investigators. And, um, and yeah, it's, uh, I, I, it's really good. And yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she's got books on voodoo, uh, earth magic, uh, all, I mean, literally all kinds of different things. Yeah. Um, now, now just to, just to kind of finish up here, um, for those listening, the reason we have called the show the full spectrum project, because we're not going to deal with just one subject. We are not going to deal just with ghosts or demons or anything like that. We're literally going to run the full spectrum of anything weird, 
strange, unusual, um, magical, you name it, we'll, we'll touch, touch base with it. Um, I think some of the, uh, uh, some of the things that, w- that we're going to talk about naturally is um, cryptozoologic creatures. We're going to talk UFOs, uh, but then we're going to kind of throw, throw it out uh, things such as strange weather phenomenon, uh, strange relationships between humans, animals, um, what, ESP. What, 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 we're let's not, back up for I'm a second. Not, I am not talking about the relationship you have with your dog. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, um, old hag syndrome. That that's one that that I I find fascinating. Um, I would love to do a show on that at some sp- point. Spontaneous human combustion. Exactly. Uh, modern day vampires. Now, that's one that I would love to to really get going. Uh, that would be a, a good one for uh, people to call in. Um, so we also have, for we, we also have we also have somebody that we're going to be bringing on uh, in the, in the in the weeks ahead. Uh, the uh, the axe man of uh, New Orleans. We have a, we have a, a, a professor that uh, wrote a book on it. That, yeah, that's going to discuss the case. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. For anybody that doesn't know about the Axe Man of New Orleans, it was uh, somebody who went on a killing spree with an axe, but stopped when he said that if everybody played jazz music one night, he wouldn't kill anybody. Well, everybody in New Orleans played a bunch of jazz music, and he disappeared. And it's just really yep. a, a, an interesting um, case of who knows what it is. Yeah. Um, so literally, you know, if, if any of our listeners have something uh, strange and unusual that they want us to uh, uh, do a show on, please, uh, you know, let us know and, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can uh, get a show going on it. Um, so literally anything strange, unusual, um, we're, we're there to, to do it. Um, and also for anybody that wants to call in with questions for our guests or for us, uh, we we highly encourage you to call in and um, you know ask, ask your questions. We want to make this a an interactive show. Uh, so when we get our email up and running, you can email questions and we'll we'll ask our guest. Um, or if you if you we. Uh... Well, um, you can get a hold of us uh, through our Facebook page, uh, which is Full Spectrum Project, and uh, you can leave us our qu- leave us questions in the in comment section there. You can post anything there for us to see, um, any 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 anything for us. You can get a hold of us uh, through there as well. Uh, me. Uh, Brian or Angie, if uh, you have anything that you want Angie to discuss for uh, her new segment uh, or guests that you want us to uh, to bring on. And, uh, you know, and, and we thank you for listening to us on our first show. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to, we look forward to uh, see, seeing or hearing from you all. And uh, well, again, we thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we we hope you will tune in next week. Um, again, uh, Marie D. Jones, uh, it should be uh, a pretty fascinating um, a couple hours, you know, talking to Marie. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and I know Pete is too, and uh, so is Angie. So um, until next week, uh, please we thank leave your you. message for. We thank Bill. you for listening. Oh, no. Pete, are you there? International Leadership of Texas wants to wish the communities we serve a safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. IL Texas prepares students for exceptional leadership roles in the international community. Visit ILTexas.org for more about our schools. It used to be hard to find the exact auto parts you needed, and that meant spending a lot of time at swap meets. It's a different game now when you can order exactly what you need from eBay Motors. They have 122 million parts, so you can always find the right fitment. Spend less time searching and more time building with the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride.
Ed. Ed.